When I first began to examine the whys and hows of producing a painting about the Vietnam War, I had to clarify my own credentials. Could I pull off such a thing? Well, I am a Marine Corps combat veteran, and I was in Vietnam in 1968 and 69, and I have an art career that has spanned almost 40 years. So I did live through those days, and I do in fact have the creative know-how to make something of this inspiration. And that is to orchestrate an ultra-realistic narrative on canvas that would tell stories that still need telling, but do so in a way that no one else has ever done. While well, often referred to as the workhorse of the artillery, the 105 millimeter howitzer, along with the four deuce mortars, 155s, 175s, 8-inch guns, and naval ordnance, fired large caliber shells with high explosive warheads, sometimes from lonely remote bases over great distances in direct sport of an infantry regiment's offensive or defensive operations in the field. Precision targeting was calculated either by forward observers on the ground with the grunts or overhead by intrepid aerial observers and slow moving spotter aircraft. As in all wars, when small arms can't quite get the job done, artillery can often show up with a real bang to put the final touches on the task of wasting the enemy. To the uninformed, Vietnam's landscape, that of dense jungles and flooded rice paddies, never appeared to provide welcoming or even logical fields of operation for employing tanks. But by the mid-60s, while fearless in the face of this unknown, the U.S. military aggressively deployed the 52-ton M48A3 tanks and unquestionably proved their usefulness. While in support of infantry operations, the M48's mobility and the increased firepower of the 90mm main gun and the vehicle's mounted machine guns served to turn the tide of myriad engagements with both the Viet Cong and the NVA. Fearing the possibility of air attacks from North Vietnam or her allies China and Russia, the Marine Corps deployed a battalion of Hawk surface-to-air missiles to protect Da Nang Air Base in Northern I Corps in February of 1965, four weeks before Marine ground combat forces came ashore. Three strategically positioned Hawk firing batteries were eventually set in place around the airfield, along with one mobile assault firing unit posted some distance from the flight line to cover the southwestern approaches. But while the finger stayed on Hawk's trigger 24-7, they knew that the sky was theirs and the enemy aircraft that they waited for would more than likely never come. When I began Vietnam Elegy, I had only four or five major anchor elements and vision for placement on the canvas. Items like the claymore, the jungle boots, a magazine cover, and the rubbing from the wall. Based upon what materials or artifacts I possess, coupled with what was available through exhaustive internet searches, additional components were gradually added to the list. How, where, and when they were incorporated on the canvas was altogether another matter. As an example, I began construction of the tank image on 18 September 2012. Then as my clock ticked, other random items were either painted or glued onto the canvas and I saw that a, a composition was finally forming up, and it gave me greater clarity as to where and when to place things. The 105 millimeter howitzer was started fully a year after the tank, and the Hawk was completed on the 2nd of January of 2014. The entire sequence of the painting's creation is accessible right on vietnamelogy.com.